Hi there, my name is Will, and today I'm gonna to walk you through the fundamentals of Kestra so you can get started building your first workflow. Now, as you can see in this example I have here, every workflow has a few key properties. For example, every flow has an ID, which is a unique name for your flow. They also have a namespace, which is an area where you can organize your flows. And lastly, they have a list of tasks. All of these tasks also have a unique ID as well as a task type. Now tasks might have additional properties too, which may be required or optional depending on their type. And you can use the built-in documentation to help you figure out which ones are required and which ones are not, as well as what content they are looking for. This workflow is going to print to the logs, hello world, when I press execute. So when I press execute, we can see it's going to run our workflow now and we can click into the Gantt view and click onto the logs to see into more detail as to what just happened. On top of that, workflows can have some additional property too, such as description to help you describe what your workflow is doing. And I can actually go to overview here and see that description in action to help other people who are using these workflows understand what it's about. I can also add labels so that when I execute the workflow, it can leave a label to help us identify what we were doing there. And as you can see here, I have my labels available here, such as owner, Rick Ashley, and project never gonna give you up. And we can actually see these in the execution page where some of the previous ones that we had did not have this. You can also add descriptions to tasks themselves to help you understand what the task is doing and why it might be doing things in a certain way. Now, if I want to add a new task, I can simply do this with the editor. And as, I, as you can see, we have an autocomplete engine that will help you get the correct task types. Now, I'm gonna add a new log message here. And when I type type in here, we can see it's going to give me all of the different types available inside of Kestra. If I type in log, we can see it narrows it down to my search field and I can easily enter it like that. Now, if I do the autocomplete one more time, I can also get to that required property message and I can add that in here too. And as we can see, it's also added that task to the topology view on the right hand side to help us understand what's going on and in which order the tasks will run. When I execute this flow now, we'll see it's going to execute both of those tasks. We can see it printed out the hello world task, but also the log task too. We can create another workflow here that's going to make an API request. When I press execute here, we see it's going to make that API request and it's going to return a log message to say it was successful. So hopefully this gives you a good insight into some of the fundamental properties into building your workflows. Later in the series, we're gonna discuss some of the bigger concepts such as inputs and outputs to help you integrate your tasks together, as well as how you can automatically run your workflows using triggers.